Of course, they don't have nine dang wives. Yeah, how that, many do you have? Land. How many do you have? We got to get to the bottom of this, okay? Come on now. Because it's an I'm impressive goatee. Guy. We're like the goatee, last, okay? I was I was last married 25 years ago. All right. My wife, who was Cody's mom and Tawny's mom, she died in a car crash 25 years ago. Sorry about That's that. That's my last wife. Okay. So, then I'm a single guy. Slinging I'm out dick. hanging around. I got lots of girls that I've met. I go on dates. I, I live alone in my house, but I certainly have female companionship as part of my existence. I love it. I'm there. And those ladies that come, all of them are in their late 30s to early 40s. I'm 60 years old. I know I look 25, but I'm 60. You know, I, I've got these lovely grown up girls who do this stuff. They trick the whole thing and like, this is this. My granddaughter's next to me. And I'm like, this is my granddaughter. She's 15 years old. She's here working so hard. And then next to her is the lady, China. And China's there. And I'm like, China got here when she was 17 years old. As I just said, 15. I said, she's here since she's 17. She turned 18 a few days later. Here she is. She helps run everything and takes care of stuff. She's my longtime girl, my longtime partner. Here's this other girl. Here's this other girl. Throughout the series, there's the, be- there's the beautiful girl putting on her makeup, doing, looking all beautiful. That's the uh, fiancé of the tech guy, Robert Johnson, who just helped me put the stuff together, oh. who's, uh, who's a professor at the university here. The other girl in the, in the little tiger suit, she's married to a military guy that, that, that's here in town. There's all these other characters, my grandson's fiancé, my son Cody, his girlfriend. The girls are those girls. All those 20-somethings are all the girls of those 20, 30-somethings. I know it's a drag that somehow there's not a harem in a tent sitting out here for a lot of guys to think that's how I was living. But that's not legal, and that's certainly not what I am pursuing. Doc, I'm really disappointed. I know okay? it happens. I I'm know really it I'm really disappointed. Okay? I was with Tim. I was like, how does he wrangle these chicks? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Fuck the tigers. Okay? But I thought you had something going on. I thought there was something, you know, Hindu spell that you were working. But apparently you're out here just dating. It's complete farce. Thing. No three wives. You do have a girl who's your partner. That was true. China is your partner. There are there are several partners in the corporation. And no, no, corporate like sexual par- lovers. You have a lover. That's the partner that it means. I have, I've got these, I've got several girlfriends that all know each other and all know about each other. And China has been one of those girls. Mm -hmm. And there are other girls that are involved. So how do you negotiate that? Let's get down to it, okay? How do you negotiate that? You don't don't have the time. (laughs) (laughs) The biggest thing, that there's one line that really is actually the thing that nobody wants to be told or to hear. Blazing, blatant truth. I feel this way. I think this way. I act this way the thing that no men want and no woman wants to hear, right? That, that's why they blasted me on the thing by saying all men are pigs and all women are sheep. I don't mean there's anything wrong with either of the sexes. Women end up falling along with the bullshit that we cast out. That's uh-huh. how it goes. It's not as popular now in the Me Too movement of life that like, you know, you're supposed to ask permission to hold someone's hand. I don't know how that could go out and get a date. I don't know what you'd do in a bar scene yeah. to be able to ask a permission for each step of the way you're trying to meet girl X. But some madness has ensued. I'm glad I'm 60 as far as that stuff goes. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's yeah. Our generation crazy. is dealing with a whole different thing. Can be kind crazy of a pain in the ass. Yep. So, okay, so it's just truth. You're saying that's how you have these multiple relationships. If you can handle it, it's just truth. And, truth. And my next question is, is the reason you're only open three days a week is because you have to handle your women the other four days a week? <laughs> is that what you're busy doing? Why, why, does everybody, why does everybody change their name? What is the purpose of the name? Is it like- There's a, no everybody, right? Nick and Rob just teched this up. Nick and Robert dudes, there's 12 of them here, and none of them were in the film. They centered only on the chicks, right? They took it all out. All these guys ah. from, from Chris, who's six foot ten, 300 pounds, and there to Chris, who runs all the tech in here, is also like 6'5 and 250. They're in the way of everything. Yeah. Those, you can't even see those dudes somehow. They edited every bit of it out, created this girl only vibe. When Cody's the star, my grandson's the other star, 
Connor, who's Cody's sidekick. They look like twins almost. They're, they're cousins. Um, they, they just took all of that crap out of there. So Cody's name is Cody. Connor's my grandson. Yeah, yeah. It's just that uh, some of the people, a handful of 25 of us, have unique names. Ooh la la. I may try to whip it around. And they got that whiny retard on there. Excuse me. <laughs> Retard's the R word. I didn't mean to say that. Bad word. Hey, you don't have to apologize on this show. In the 80s. That ridiculous whiny kid comes on who's a part-time babysitter, this girl Barbara Crockett, who comes on like, they made me get breast implants. Yeah, that, I want to ask you about that. She's Does everybody the one telling get the tale and, and talking shit about all the names and this and that. That chick comes on as a babysitter. She's hanging out part time. She is infatuated with getting her boobs done. She goes to a board certified plastic surgeon. They're not fools. It's at a very big wealthy clinic here in town. It's a guy that we know. He gives her the full talking to about the dramas of getting boobs. You're a teenager. I don't know what you want. This is hard stuff. He's like, I got to have them. He hooks her up with a finance program where she pays to have them, pays for them financially one month at a time, you know, or $111 or something every month just to buy boobies. She's got them. She hangs out. She's only babysitting my daughter, doing nothing else. She goes off to a show with me, falls in love with a guy that jousts, a guy that rides a horse and people off with a lance, a, a jousting stunt show. Yeah. It's pregnant by the dude and runs away with him. He's gone <laughs> another year or so. He comes back. She's like, yeah, well, I didn't have that baby. I, I didn't stay married. I'd like to I'd like to teach a little more. I want to hang out. It was fun. Can I hang out? He comes back. She hangs out again for a little while. She's, she's, doing stuff. she's good with my young daughter. She's a very young kid herself. She's just playing around with her. We travel off five stars to Africa. We travel to Thailand. We travel to the Bahamas. We spend time doing stuff in Las Vegas. She gets to travel and live like a princess in all these places. She lives in a brand new house here, a barn with cockroaches. This is a pristine, perfectly clean place. Cockroaches, you'd lose your permit. They'd come on you, they'd hammer you. Three to four times a month, unannounced federal veterinarians show up here and white glove the whole experience and always have. And they were when she was here. There's the same people that when she visited and kind of did this roller coaster ride of of hanging out here, getting pregnant and running off, which she did three times during her career. That whole crazy process while she's here, the people that were here when she started, they're still here. Other guys like Rob, who was just here, who's now 45 years old, a professor at the university, he was here for her beginning to end. He's already a set wealthy guy living in a beautiful river home and stuff. We own 11 fabulous homes. You see the guy talking about all the houses we own here on the show, blah, blah, blah. Even though the fool is pointing to my neighbor's houses. My neighbors are coming to me like, yo, my house, doc, what are you doing? I'm like, that guy's a fool. He switched the audio track, the visual track. I'm like, they're showing house after house in a row. We're 50 acres. It's probably a half mile long. And there's houses woven through the woods along the water and different places that have been acquired. Those beautiful homes, million dollar a piece homes, a number of them. That's where staffs live. That's where my son Cody lives. My nieces, nephews, grandchildren, my two daughters, 17 of the 25 of us are directly related. And every other girl that was on the outside in there that isn't my daughter, who are beautiful, big, tall girls, and my grandchildren, who are of the same ilk, are the, the significant others of the staff. They just went at that. And then they said that made us a cult somehow because there's you're a family. Family and chicks. So many chicks got to be a cult. Where the hell are those places? Why Why was this girl so willing to lie? I don't, I don't understand. You think she was paid? She's a little crazy. Animal people. I told you. Sometimes these an animal, animal person. Pe- Doc, <laughs> sometimes these animal people get a little loony. You have to admit. So sometimes, what it is is that lunatics are attracted to animals. There we go. Animals are not attracted to lunatics. Lunatics are attracted to animals. Why? There is artists who want to have the artful, amazing relationship with animals. But then there are lunatics who can't get it together. Their minds are squashed. They can't focus. They don't know what's happening. And they find solace in an animal that they can't. It doesn't judge them. It Uh doesn't have any speech about who they are. It's got none of the social boundaries and stuff that everybody expects them to have. They can just be Looney Tunes around their dog, their cat 
or God forbid, cats. You right. know, the more cats you have, the you, more unique you are. You know, <laughs> you you start saying, "I got a cat. I got five. I got thirty-seven. When someone's got thirty-seven, they're special every damn time. You know, they are unique. How many and cats do you have? Hey, I got only big tigers. It's a whole different <laughs> thing. Got a, a big brain, a great a great bearing and intelligence. House cats are little pea brain guys that are parasitic to the human race. Tigers <laughs> find us snackeritic to the human race. You know, they've been eating our kind for a million years. Those other guys just live off of us, you know, cruising around, spitting on you, spreading disease and making a strange connection. I, I'm not the greatest fan of, of house cats. I love it. Crazy people akin to that unique lady are there. She's the only one. I've got 350 kids that have come here and gone through this apprentice program and helped me do stuff. And, and I've had a, a, a ton of nanny babysitters come. They interviewed all of them that they could find. They offered cash to people just to say anything they could. No. Not a soul came forward except that crazy nut. So right? you think she was My paid? My opinion, she lost it. A lot of talk about pays happened. I haven't seen the paycheck, so I don't know. But she started in on this whole thing. She even called staff saying, ha ha, I've got you guys now. You'll be gone. You're going down the drain. Uh, she called Rob while he was in Africa and told him, you've had it now, bucko. You better find a new job. I've taken them down. Something special going on there. You know, I'm not a psychiatrist. If I was, I, I would guess that she would have her own chapter. Yeah, it just seems so weird that she would be so resentful, but probably a pretty miserable person, pretty, right? Pretty common, right? Really disgruntled employees. And eh, some of the same people that are there with her, you know, have, have made tons of money and had tons of adventure and had tons of, you know, prosperity in their life because of their connection to what's happening. She's way down the list on that stuff jealous, insane women, they do seem to flow.